a bit more expansive from what I saw we played some nice stuff and yeah look with Lee Carsley I reckon he probably gets the job to be honest I rather I wouldn't want him I wouldn't want him but there's nothing really against him it's just I feel like going down a inexperienced manager route is just it's not the route you want to take you know we're on the edge of winning something we now need to go get someone who we think can push us over the edge and I'm not sure Lee Carsley's that guy, but what I will say is, it's a strong audition. It's a strong audition, a strong start to his, his tenure as England manager. Um, and yeah, I was pretty happy with this result um, from from England, and hopefully we can have a better result uh, against Finland. Right then, uh, let's have a look here. So, Wales, Wales. Um, this one was interesting because, um, so I think they drew nil nil. Um, who, who did they face? I can't quite remember. Um, but this is just something I didn't realise that Greg Bellamy, I completely forgot, is the new Wales manager. I completely forgot about this, which is a really, really cool appointment, I think. Uh, yeah, returned to the international stage for the first time since retiring as a player in October 2013. I think this is a cool appointment. Bellamy was, I believe, the assistant manager under Vincent Company uh, at Burnley. Um, yeah, obviously he's inexperienced, but I'm really intrigued to see how he does as Wales manager and how they do see if he can get them to the World Cup. That would be really, really cool. Um, and yeah, apparently it seems 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 out not too bad. Right, Netherlands. Bosnia do, I mean, what a game this is, wow, 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 what a game, goals galore, Joshua Zerks, he scored his first goal for the Netherlands as well, um, winning his third cap, netted a fine flicked header from following Xavi Simmons deflected shot, Damarovic levelled, Pavet Zerks even picked up Dijani Rinders to pose ahead again in the first half of injury time, Cody Gakbo then scored, Ed in Jekko then scored, I mean Ed in Jekko, I didn't realise he was still still playing for the Bosnian national team uh, because I swear when they played England he was in there is this the same guy? because I remember when they played England like before the Heroes it was like the guy's first ever game in charge or something as a manager um, and he just picked like some randoms to play uh, so I don't know if that's the same guy still there but yeah well, wow, their course came on for Xerxes and scored this is another thing, wow, where goes, I mean, he's just one of those players, isn't he, where, um, when he puts on that orange shirt, it's just unreal, he's unreal, I don't know what it is, um, where is where goes playing now, I, I swear I saw something like, is he, is he back in the Netherlands or something, he definitely left Burnley late in the window, but I can't remember where he went to, might be Turkey, might be Turkey, but yeah, great result for the Netherlands, 5-2 victory, um, yeah, not too bad, not too bad, building off that momentum from, um, from, from the Euros, right, Germany as well, also put five past their opponents, but they won 5-0 versus Hungary, Falkland, Musiala versus Pavlovich and Kai Havertz with the goals, Falkland put Germany ahead, Musiala doubled the lead as they broke from Hungary corner, first set up, the goal, then got the ball from Musiala before drilling in. Pavlovich got his first Germany goal. And then Guy Havertz um, scored a penalty. I mean, this is mad impressive because they, they played in the Euros group, didn't they? I, I can't remember what happened in that game. I think it was like 1 or 2 0, wasn't it? Um, it was kind of a close game, right? So to, to, to beat the 5 0, I mean, that is, that's emphatic. Interesting, Falkirk and Havertz played. Um, so yeah, Gundogan, Gundogan not called up, I'm guessing, I'm guessing this is sort of the new, new line, front line, because that also at the Heroes we saw Havertz up top, first Musiala and Gundogan, but it seems like now, Falkirk or Max Bayer are going to be the striker then, in the going future, and then Guy Havertz dropping into the number 10 role, we'll see how that does, um, yeah, look, we all know, Germany were absolutely terrific at the Euros. 
San Marino, it's mad. It's absolutely mad. I mean, what a story. And I mean, um, hopefully we'll have a look at the groups later, but I'm pretty sure they're top of the group. I'm pretty sure they might be top of their group, which is mad. Who knows, maybe this is going to spark something. Imagine San Marino then just manage to start winning games again. That's insane. But yeah, massive shout out, massive shout out to San Marino. Uh, Scotland, Poland played a pretty entertaining game. 3 to 97th minute penalty. I mean, that's mad. But the Napoli partnership, McDominay and Billy Gilmore both scored. Yeah, stoppage time penalty. Um, Robert Lewandowski also scored a pen. Nikola Zale Zale <laughs> Nikola Zalewski, there we go. Zalewski was a victim of a rash challenge by Grant Hanley and the pole. Picked himself up to score the 97th minute penalty. Scotland, who meekly exited this summer's Euros with one point from three group games, now must travel to face Portugal on Sunday with a record of just one win in 13 and five defeats in 2024. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, with that record, the wheels are sort of feeling, um, falling off for Scotland under Steve Clark. I'm sure Steve Clark is, you know, they're gonna have thoughts about maybe replacing him. I know he's done an amazing job to get them to the Euros, um, and I wouldn't replace him just yet, but I feel like if this keeps continuing, then yeah, they will eventually have to replace him, because that's not really good enough. Northern Ireland did manage to win against Luxembourg. Denmark beat Switzerland in a mad game. Two red cards, Elvedi and Xhaka, and then, uh, yeah, a late on Oiberg, 92nd minute, made it 2-0 to Denmark. Euro winner Spain held 0-0 uh, for Serbia. Um, pretty good result there for Serbia. Pretty good result. Um, African, Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers, by the way. Um, I don't want to just talk about Europe. Algeria won 2-0. Ghana lost 93rd minute versus Angola. God damn. God damn. Um, Burundi won 3-1 there. Oh wait, yeah, this is... Commonable World Cup qualifiers, Bolivia beat Venezuela 4-0, 4-0, I mean, that's mad. I mean, the, the, the altitude tax on this is crazy, the altitude tax on this is crazy. Bolivia, basically, if you don't know, um, are basically like an extremely like, high altitude, high mountains country, so they play their games in like extreme altitude, which is why when they play home games, they always win them. I'm pretty sure they beat Argentina back in the day with Messi like 6-1 at home because teams just are not used to playing in that high altitude and Bolivia are. Um, but then every time they go away they get smacked up because they're pretty bad. But still to beat Venezuela 4-0, I mean that's a, that's a result. And Venezuela have never qualified for a World Cup, they're the only South American uh, side not to qualify for a World Cup. So, uh, yeah, they've started this this one pretty good. They've started this qualification process really good. So, this is a big blow for them. Um, and then, yeah, Africa, Asia has also got similar ones. Cardinals 3 on for UAE. Um, South Korea drew to Palestine. Japan won 7 0 versus China. Bahrain beat Australia 1 0 in the 89th minute. I mean, that's a mad result. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at Friday's results. And if it catch the eye, Belgium won 3 1 De Bruyne with a brace. Oh, yeah, France, Italy. Italy won 3 1 in France. Like that in the Parc de Bali. That is insane. Insane. Although, wow, I did not realize this. Ricardo Calafori got injured. Injured. Wow. Free collision as Osman Dembele was tackled by another player and caught him on the back of the leg with his studs. Tried to play on for a few minutes but had to be replaced. That's not good for Arsenal fans because, you know, he, he does have a concerning injury record, so, yeah, not good. Barkler gave France the lead after just 12 seconds. I mean, Barkler, by the way, played good in this game and he has started to see some really well for PSG. Um, he looks sensational, but... Italy were almost five, level five minutes later by Davide Fladesi's header. DeMarco scored an amazing volley. Go watch it. It's a beautiful volley. Denali as well. Back in the side. First international games in September 2023. Michael Ali 
Lacazette also made his senior debut for France, but yeah, what a result for Italy. What a result for Italy after a really poor Euros. Well, question marks over Spalletti, but this is a huge result for them, beating France away from home, and will give them so much confidence, so much confidence, and uh, yeah, really, really good result. As for France, I mean, this isn't good. This isn't good. They played some awful football in uh, in the Euros, right? And and now losing like this is the Dejobs era coming to the end. I think it should. I think they should get rid of Dejobs, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure they will. I'm not sure they will. Um, what else happened here? Austria drew. Yeah, Wales did draw nil nil to Turkey. Morocco beat Gabon four one. Egypt won three. Ivory Coast got 2 0 victory. South Africa 2 2 vs. Uganda 95th minute equaliser. Senegal drew to Bakuna Faso 95th minute equaliser. There. Uh, where's that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Argentina won 3 0 vs. Chile. Dybala and Alvarez late on. They had no Messi in this game because he is injured still from a Copa America final. So that's a pretty impressive victory, showing they can win without Messi. Uh, Georgia beat Czech Republic 4-1, which is a mad result. I mean, these guys are just riding that wave from the Heroes, because I remember they played in the Heroes, didn't they? And uh, I think it was a draw, but Czech Republic dominated that game, so Georgia to win 4-1 is pretty impressive. Albania beat Ukraine, that's a big result for them. Greece smacked up Finland, that's, that's pretty good from them. Um, what else we got? Armenia beat Latvia. We had some EFL going on as well. This, this by the way, was mad. I just want to briefly talk about this. Danny Butterworth scored a 98th minute equaliser to earn Swindon a dramatic 1 1 drop. Barrow, after makeshift keeper Rory Feely threatened to become the Cumbrian's unlikely hero. Without a recognised substitute keeper on the bench, Feely took over the clubs after Paul M. Farman's 42nd minute sending off. Swindon were also reduced to 10 men as well, so basically the centre-back had to go in goal for a whole half of football because they had no substitute keeper on the bench. Um, and he came on and he was holding out, holding out the clean sheet. Um, and then in the 98th minute, the guy just, he was like, oh, screw it, and just shot from distance. It was a rubbish shot, and then the keeper just, like, spilled it. I was, I was heartbreaking. He always got the clean sheet. He always got the clean sheet. Um, right, let's skip, skip, skip to here. Canada beat the US in the US. Well, that, that's, that's a result for them. Pochettino was not in charge, by the way. Poch is going to be US manager, but was not in charge uh, for this game. Nigeria won. Lookman 2, Osman gold as well. I believe Brazil also played. Um, once I get through all of this... There we go. Yeah, Uruguay drew nil nil to Paraguay, which is a disappointing one, but they did oh yeah, this was also Luis Suarez's um final game. A final game. Seventeen year Uruguay career came to a close. Announced on Monday that he is retiring from international football. Ends as Uruguay's all time leading scorer with sixty nine goals in hundred and forty three appearances. Yeah. Um I think that where does Suarez rank in terms of Uruguayans all time? He's definitely up there in terms of being one of the greatest, maybe the greatest. I don't know that much about Uruguayans um, history, but he's definitely up there, you know, led them to what? The, uh, the semi-final of the World Cup in 2010. All-time leading top goal scorer. Yeah, just an amazing, amazing forward for them and uh, a legend of the game. Brazil won 1-0 versus Ecuador Rodriguez. Colombia drew to Pelu, Luis Diaz. He's been amazing for him for Liverpool and also continued out getting a late equaliser for Colombia. But yeah, I believe that is that's all of them. Let's let's have a look if I can see the tables. Um if I put your way for Nations League. Yeah. So we can have a look at some of the tables and look at some of the draws. So yeah. League A, Group 1, Poland, Portugal, Scotland, Croatia. Um, yeah, with Scotland losing that first Poland, I think Scotland might be cooked, to be honest. Um, but this 
it's a pretty good group. We'll see. We'll see who comes out of that. Italy, Belgium, Israel, France. Uh, yeah, Israel are cooked in this. France losing to Italy now really have to beat Belgium um, in their next game. Germany, Netherlands, Bosnia, Hungary. Yeah, Germany, Netherlands should probably get through this easily. Denmark, Serbia, Spain, Switzerland. This is a great group. This is a great group. And with that draw, this has really, really opened it up. Really, really opened this group up. Um, yeah, Sweden, Slovakia should go through there. Pretty easy. Um, yeah, look at San Marino. San Marino, top of their group. Come on, the boys. Um, who knows, they might actually qualify out of this. They might actually get promoted out of this league. Um, if they can get something versus Gibraltar, just get something. Just get something. Get a draw. Get a draw. Uh, yeah, England. We're, we're, we're in such an easy group. I mean, it's a disgrace that we're this low because we, we like, messed up an Asian lead, didn't we, last time. I want to check, um, Gomnabor. Gom okay, uh, let me, um, uh, well, I put World Cup, uh, there we go, World Cup qualifying. Um, so, let's look at, uh, eight. okay, great, that doesn't even work. Let's look. See you.